So good morning, everyone. Welcome from uh, balmy Naples, Florida. It is day 10 of our Lenten journey into our mastery, into the mastery of our ministry in awakening as Christ, as the Christ presence and Christ consciousness. So we are at day 10 and I'm saying congratulations. Um, if you've been joining or if you've just come in, uh, we're in double digits. So something is really happening when we commit, when we really commit to a practice. And as demonstrated uh, by our brother and way shower Jesus, he was committed to his ministry. And that's really what this time uh, period of Lent is about, is, is deepening our commitment to our own ministry and to our own hum human school, our own curriculum, our own ashram, which is our lives as we awaken to our divine identity. So I'm going to sound the tone, uh, signaling our turning from uh, the world of form, not that there's anything wrong with form, it's the outpicturing of our consciousness and so really what we're doing is we're just saying, you know what, that's not uh, what has power in our lives. The only power and presence is when we turn within to divine mind. And that's what we do when we center, turning from the world of form and we turn into cause. And so we just allow the body eyes to close if that's comfortable, if you're in a safe space to do that. And we begin to follow breath and breathing. We relax the body mind and relax the body. We slip into the divine realm of our true power and our true authority as we unify the mind and heart with the mind and heart of all that is. And truly, this is the most natural thing to do as we return to our aboriginal, original nature, as abiding, as the divine idea in the mind of love. It is here that we abide and rest for a moment, perfectly safe and perfect peace. as we allow the God is, I am consciousness, to take the lead as we surrender everything to it. God is, I am, and herein lies our power, And I allow the attunement as follows, placing the hand before the heart. I utter these words. I know who I am in truth. I know what I am in truth. I know how I serve in truth. 
I am free. I am free. I am free. I rise into the upper room. The I am consciousness. And behold, I make all things new. And so it is in this consciousness that we invoke the one power, the one presence, to be omni-active in this experience. This time is blessed. We are divinely receptive to the only power to descend into our consciousness and awareness. We welcome it. We allow it. And so it is. Amen. 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 <sighs> and so you can remain in this centeredness and simply listen to this voice. That on this journey, what we do is we, we continuously recalibrate. We continuously and intentionally return to the divine order of divine mind first, connecting here just as we did. We connect in divine mind. We become receptive to the divine ideas, the thoughts of God, literally the thoughts of God. And, and, and these thoughts of God are representative as words, as ideas that populate our consciousness and awareness. And then as we affirm and express them through the center, through the voice, they become power-filled as the word of God. And this is the power of this experience. We, we can walk through our experience of life allowing the disorderly thought system of a mind believing it is separate from source, from God. We can call that the ego. We can call that the devil. Fillmore calls that by many things. When we're mired in, in that consciousness, it, it takes on a persona called Satan, but it's nothing that is actually powerful or separate from us. He calls it the carnal mind, and our whole practice is, is to surrender that mind, to rebuke it, to turn from it and turn toward the one power and one presence, to, if you will, avail ourselves of the tree of life. And that tree of life is that divine order. It's the divine mind, divine idea into expression through us as us. And so this Lenten journey is truly going from a, a mind that's separate and pure duality, pure insanity, truly where we believe that form and effect is cause, that upside down thinking, and that life is happening to us. And during this journey, as we are revolutionaries, as we commit to our ministry, we turn toward God and we write our thinking and our thought system because that's what we have dominion over in this experience. But of our own selves, we do nothing. And so we, we turn and we surrender and we rise up through our volition, through our determination, through our dedication. That the only relationship of value is the relationship with God. And that our life is merely showing us, it's merely our ashram, it's merely showing us our little lessons where we have bought into and believed illusion. And so as we go along this journey and we are revolving, we're returning home to the garden of Eden. Therein lies this tree of knowledge. And if you consider that it was in kindness, in benevolence that 
Adam, the, the metaphysical figure of Adam, the, the carnal mind, the mind, the human mind, the, that aspect that is alive is, is removed from that garden, removed out of kindness from, from partaking of a tree of good and evil. You see, that's the duality, that's the insanity. And, and, and that the, the entrance back to the garden is the pathway that we have so far followed in these first 10 days. And today's gateway, today's idea, today's quality of mind that we cultivate is power. But you see, all of these powers, all of these faculties of mind are, uh, are intertwined. And so it is upon faith and faith thinking, dominion over our thoughts, that we begin to choose. First, it becomes our will to, to choose the thoughts of God, to choose the thought of love, to cultivate faith, faith in God, that faith of God may come forth, and that that faithfulness in thought combined with love as a quality that we we cultivate at the seed of love yesterday that love guides and that love leads and that this is what our power stands upon it stands upon partaking of that tree of life and that tree of life is that divine mind that creative orderly thought system divine mind divine idea, expression through the power center, which is the throat. And so in my practice, what I would do is that I would take my oils after we pray in and I surrender to this order of divine mind. God is divine idea. I am. I am Christ. And then, and then, cultivating a blessing of the throat chakra, which is where the word comes forth and through the word of God. And that is our power. This is different in contrast, the ideas that come from fear, from the mind of duality, that prattle and argue and you know, protect and project those are all thoughts of fear. And, and one of the things that we're learning in, in this practice is that um, those thoughts have power and those words have power too, but not the power of God. And so I would call it a forcefulness, like a, a force versus power, and, and it really has no effect in reality. But when we're operating from that, it sure makes a mess, does it not? And so we, we are turning from that and choosing absolutely to surrender the thoughts and mind and then the words, the powerful words that we speak to spirit. So take a breath with me. As we go into the reading from the Lenten lessons, and I'm going to take a sip here. And I invite you to center with me again. So day 10, power. It says man, humanity, individuals, we control our thoughts and our feelings by the use of this innate power. A quickening from on high must precede a realization of dominion. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So our power comes from source, comes from spirit, holy and divine. And I always laugh when I see the word dominion and going back to my early um, spiritual counseling sessions where I would go in and tell my story and and um, I would I was told by my spiritual practitioner uh, you have dominion over your thoughts 
Like this is huge. We have dominion over our thoughts, but we only have that dominion when we place them upon the altar and surrender them to spirit. So we, man, is the power of God in action. We are the power of God in action. The power to control our thinking is the highest gift given to us. There is a universal creative force that urges us forward to the recognition of the creative power of individual thought. The, there are no idle thoughts. This is the, um, the, the uh, modality, the realm within which we create in form is through the word. The word Jehovah or Christ is charged with spiritual power far above and beyond any other word in human language. So when we pray in the name of God, when we pray in the name of Jehovah, when we pray in the name of Christ, it means that we're praying and we're empowering our thoughts and words with that I am consciousness that consciousness that is dedicated, committed, and absolute in its union with the mind of God. This empowers our words. The power center is in the throat, is the do open door between the formless and the formed worlds of vibration pertaining to the expression of sound. When the voice is united with the life of the soul, it takes on a sweetness and a depth that one feels and remembers. But sweeter and deeper still is the voice of one who has made union with spirit and can say with Jesus, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The words have a vibratory field that extend out from us. And, and like, like if you imagine dropping pebbles into a pool of water, that they ripple out. They bump into others who have this, you know, our brothers and sisters, and then they ripple back towards us. Imagine how words of love, words of peace, words of, um, of affirmation blanket the wor world with a vib vibratory field that shifts and changes and impacts well beyond the word having been spoken and uttered. That's a lot of power. I cultivate a loving attitude of mind toward everybody, and my voice is rich, warm, and mellow. As I pray and realize spiritual dominion, I feel vital and energetic, and my voice is strong and vibrant and brilliant. Through these vibrations, I feel the power of unity with the higher self more quickly than in any other way. All powers given unto me in heaven, which means mind, and in earth, which means body. All powers given unto me in heaven and in earth. So we take a breath here. The word power was a word that I shied away from. In my sp early spiritual journey, I remember um, part of, of how I cultivated my commitment and my dedication to spirit was I, I decided to become a religious science spiritual practitioner, which is about a three-year program, and that's what I did at Agape International where Reverend Michael Beckwith is uh, the founder and, and leader of that community. And after I matriculated through the coursework, which involved an inward journey and then how to pray with others, and 
at the conclusion, there's a graduation. And, and in the graduation ceremony, we crossed a threshold. But before we crossed a threshold, we were given a quality. And the quality that I was given, and I, rem I, I still have it, it's on a laminated card with a little charm. And it says, powerful, powerful. Oh, and I remember, oh my gosh, who am I to be powerful? And what we were to do in the ceremony, we were to cross the threshold and speak our quality that we were given. And I crossed the threshold and Reverend Michael was on the other side. And when I spoke the word powerful, I spoke it meekly, um, without certainty. And I crossed over and I said, powerful. I had to do it again <laughs> after he spoke and he taught me that I had to, that, that this is the power that isn't coming from me. It's not coming from Claudia. It's coming from spirit. And that we are the channels of this power. It's not about our personality. It's not about forcefulness. It is from spirit and spirit qualifies each of us to be powerful in the unique ways that we are here to surrender into this divine mind and its power and allow the divine ideas of that power to come in and through us and it qualifies our words, our actions, our way of being, our gifts and we each have a unique gift. And so that was the word that I was given and it has been a journey to step into and allow that power and my voice because at that time, I didn't do what I'm doing now. I couldn't comprehend that. I had a desire, but I didn't have the uh, sufficient uh, qualification, the qualifying of spirit to do that. And so I want to turn to our scripture for today and then close. And so we're following Keep a True Lent by Charles Fillmore, and each day we have a reading. And, and it's uh, towards the back of the book. This one is on page 153. And each day it has a scripture reading that's connected with it. But if you also look towards the back of the book, there is a study guide that has uh, reading assignments and, and little study questions. So I just share this with you to orient you to where I pull my material from and what I study. And um, today I want to share with you the re in, in the supplemental reading is just beautiful. Um, so I invite you to read that. But today I want to read from here. Um, it's Luke 4, uh, Luke chapter 4, verse uh, 31 to 38, 37 is our reading today. And I just invite you to take a breath as you listen uh, to this reading with me. So this is Jesus, and this is Jesus really uh, demonstrating and cultivating um, his mastery and his ministry. And it says that he, he went down to Capernaum, a, a city in Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. They were astounded at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, let us alone. So this is the man who's with the demon voice saying, let us alone. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. Be silent and come out of him, he rebuked. When the demon had thrown him down before them, 
he came out of him without having done him any harm. They were all amazed and kept saying to one another, what kind of utterance is this? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and out they come. And a report about him began to reach every place in the region. This is a demonstration of the authority, the power of the mind unified with the mind of God that has the power and the authority to rebuke thoughts, a thought system of fear that doesn't abide in another person per se, but that is has been active in our lives, in our mind, and that we have the authority to command and rebuke these thoughts. And, and, and when we do so, when we ignore them, when we turn from them, they subside without harming us at all. And there's one other point I want to make because the man who was having these, these false thoughts and, and was consumed by them actually spoke a word of truth. He identified Jesus as the Holy One of God. So why would Jesus rebuke him? Because even the egoic mind, even the mind of fear, will co-opt statements of truth and try to convince you that it knows. And I'm here to say it knows nothing. And it can use these words to convince you otherwise. And so only thoughts of God, only thoughts of love that descend into our consciousness and ascend and populate our entire being, those words of truth, not coming from, quote, unquote, a false prophet, but, but uttered from the word of God. He did not desire for a true testimony to come from a false witness, to come from the ego. To, to, uh, he rebuked that anyway. All power and authority are ours when we join in this consciousness. And so as I sound the tone of the bell to close us out today, I invite you to partake of this lesson throughout your day and to go forth and multiply the consciousness of the powerful presence of the mind of God in your life as we close with the following attunement. In our ministry here, we abide as Christ, as the I am consciousness. We join with this divine mind. And in this divine mind, we say, God is. And we proclaim, I am. And in the name of Christ, in the name of Jehovah, in the name of the I am consciousness, I attune us for this day by speaking this word from the guides. Word, I am word. I am the activity and power of God in form and expression. Word, I am word. I am word through my thoughts. I am word through this body. I am word through my vibration. I am word through the words that I speak. And I am word through all who are in my experience. Word, I am word. And so it is. Amen. Amen.